son of God, and my brother say my mind, and you don't die, give as you receive, and your release is Satan. Today is the number 184 in the series How to Manifest Immortality, and the name of this teaching is the name of God is my inheritance. Practice this thought every hour of the day. The name of God is my inheritance. You live by symbols. You have made up names for everything you see, and each one becomes a separate entity identified by its own name. By this, you carve it out of unity. By this, you designate its special attributes and set it off from other things by emphasizing space surrounding it. This space you lay between all things to which you give a different name, all happenings in terms of place and time, all bodies which are greeted by a name. This space you see as setting off all things from one another is the means by which the world's perception is achieved. You see something where nothing is, and see as well nothing where there is unity, a space between all things, between all things and you. Thus do you think that you have given life in separation. By this split, you think you are established as a unity with which functions with an independent will. What are these names by which the world becomes a series of discrete events, of things ununified, of bodies kept apart and holding bits of mind of separate awareness, a separate awareness? You gave these names to them, establishing perception as you wished to have perception be. The nameless things were given names, and thus reality was given them as well. For what is named is given meaning and will then be seen as meaningful, a cause of true effect with consequence in hating itself. This is the way reality is made by partial vision purposefully set against the given truth. Its enemy is holiness. It conceives of little things and looks upon them. In a lack of space, a sense of unity or vision that sees differently becomes the threat which it must overcome conflict with and deny. Yet, does this other vision still remain a natural direction for the mind to channel its perception? It is hard to teach the mind a thousand alien names and a thousand more. Yet you believe that this is what learning means. It's one essential goal by which communication is achieved and concepts can be meaningfully said. This is the sum of the inheritance the world bestows. And everyone who learns to think that it is so accepts the signs and symbols that assert the world is real. It is for this they stand. They leave no doubt that what is named is there. It can be seen as is anticipated. What denies that it is true is but illusion, for it is the ultimate reality. To question it is madness, to accept its presence is the proof of sanity. Such is the teaching of the world. It is a phase of learning everyone who comes must go through. But the sooner he perceives on what it rests, how questionable are its premises, how doubtful its results, the sooner does he question its effects. Learning that stops with what the world would teach, stops sort of, sort of meaning. In its proper place, it says, but as a starting point from which another kind of learning can begin, a new perception can be gained, and all the arbitrary means, all the arbitrary names the world bestows can be withdrawn as they are raised to doubt. Think not you made the world. Illusions? Yes. But what is true in earth and heaven is beyond your naming. When you call upon a brother, 
It is to his body that you make appeal. His true identity is hidden from you by what you believe he is. His body makes response to what you call him, for his mind consents to take the name you give him as his own. And thus, his unity is twice denied. For you perceive him, for you perceive him separate from you, and he accepts this separate name as his. It would indeed be strange if you were asked to go beyond all symbols of the world, forgetting them forever, yet were asked to take a teaching function. You have need to use the symbols of the world a while, but be you not deceived by them as well. They do not stand for anything at all, and in your practicing it is this thought that will release you from them. They become but means by which you can communicate in ways the world can understand, by which you recognize is not the unity where true communication can be found. Thus, what you need are intervals each day in which the learning of the world becomes a transitory phase, a prison house from which you go into the sunlight and forget the darkness. Here you understand the God, the name which God has given you. The one identity which all things say, the one acknowledgement of what is true. And then step back to darkness, not because you think it's real, but only to proclaim its unreality in terms which still have meaning in the world that darkness rules. Use all the little names and symbols which delineate the world of darkness, yet accept them not as your reality. The Holy Spirit uses all of them, but he does not forget creation has one name, one meaning, and a single source which unifies all things within itself. Use all the names the world bestows on them, but for convenience, for convenience, Convenience. Yet, do not forget they say the name of God along with you. God has no name. And yet, his name becomes the final lesson that all things are one. And at this lesson does all learning end. All names are unified. All space is filled with truth's reflection. Every gap is closed and separation healed. The name of God is the inheritance he gave to those who chose the teaching of the world to take the place of heaven. In our practicing, our purpose is to let our minds accept what God has given as the answer to the pitiful inheritance you made as fitting tribute to the son he loves. No one can fail who seeks the meaning of the name of God. Experience must come to supplement the word. But first, you must accept the name for all reality and realize the many names you gave its aspects have distorted what you see, but have not interfered with truth at all. One name we bring into our practicing, one name we use to unify our sight. And though we use a different name for its awareness of an aspect of God's Son, we understand that they have but one name, which He has given them. It is this name we use in practicing. And through its use, all foolish separation, separations disappear which kept us blind. And we are given strength to see beyond them. Now, our sight is blessed with blessing we can give as we receive. Father, our name is yours. In it, we are united with all things and you who are the one creator. What we made and call by many different names is but a shadow we have tried to cast across your own reality. And we are glad and thankful we were wrong. All our mistakes we give to you 
that we may be absolved from all effects our errors seem to have. And we accept the truth you give in place of every one of them. Your name is our salvation and escape from what we made. Your name unites us in the oneness which is our inheritance and peace. Amen. Thank you, Son of God.